the story of Dinah is one of three stories of rape found in the Bible. A, the rape of Dinah. B, the rape of the concubine in Gibeah. C, the rape of Tamar. A, the rape of Don. And when Shechem, the son of Hamar, the Havite, prince of the country, saw her, he took her and lay with her and defiled her. Genesis 34, verse 2. B, the rape of the concubine in Gibeah. And they knew her and abused her all night until the morning. Judges 19, verse 25. And C, the rape of Tamar. But being stronger than she, Amnon, forced her and lay with her, 2 Samuel 13, verse 14. Several common features bind these stories. Each of the acts of rape is characterized in a similar fashion, wrought folly. Indeed, in each story, the narrator adopts a contentious attitude toward the perpetrator of the rape and condemns the act itself. Finally, vengeance is exacted against the perpetrator in each of the stories. The rape of Donna leads to the destruction of an entire city. The rape of the concubine in Gibeah results in a bloody war between the tribes of Israel, and the rape of Tamar ends with the murder of Amnon. The story of Donna is especially important. It concerns the house of Jacob, from which the Israelites sprung as a nation. Indeed, in this story, we witness the earliest development of a society's moral stand concerning the defilement of a woman's honor and body. In this analysis, I am concerned with the development of this moral stand or position as it first appears in homiletic literature. Specifically, how does the story structure permit the successful transmission of a socio-ethical of socio-ethical principles. The story of Donna presents the reader with different perceptions of life. It hints at the struggle of one family against a harsh and alienating world. The reader is presented with a tale of revenge. This is true for all levels of the story, whether it concerns the massacre of the people of Shechem, the family, or whether they blame for the massacre, should rest on the two brothers who did the slaying or on the entire family. The story is rich in interesting aspects concerning content, form, and interpretation by the reader. The reader's interpretation and perceptions are in themselves aspects which disclose interesting analytical perspectives. The first of these is the assertion that the reader is examining the text while reading and that while engaged in this examination, he forfeits his absolute. Don is first mentioned in Genesis 30, verse 21, as the daughter of Leah and Jacob, born to Leah after she bore six sons to Jacob. In Genesis 34, Donna went out to visit the women of Shechem, where the, her people had made camp and where her father Jacob had purchased the land where he had pitched his tent. Shechem, the son of Hamah, the prince of the land, then took her and had sex with her. The episode of the Levite's concubine, also known as the Benjamite War, is a biblical narrative in Judges 19 through 21, chapters 19, 20, and 21 of the book of Judges. It concerns a Levite from Ephraim and his concubine who travel through the Benjamite city of Gibeah and are assailed by a mob who wish to gang rape the Levite. He turns his concubine over to the crowd, and they rape her until she collapses. The Levite dismembers her and presents the remains to the other tribes of Israel. 
Outraged by the incident, the tribe swear that none shall give his daughter to the Benjamites or Benjamites for marriage and launch a war which nearly wipes out the clan, leaving only 600 surviving men. However, the punitive expedition is overcome by remorse, fearing that it will cause the extension of an entire tribe. They circumvent the oath by pillaging and massacre massacring the city of Jabesh Gilead, none of whose residents partook in the war or in the vow, and capturing his 400 maidens for the Benjamites. The 200 men still lacking women are suddenly allowed to abduct the maidens dancing at Shiloh. Tema was the daughter of King David and Maka, M-A-A-C-A-H, who was the daughter of Tamiah, king of Geshur. Absalom was her brother and Amnon her half-brother. In the narrative, Amnon became obsessed with Tamar, said to be beautiful like her brother, Absalom. Amnon's friend and cousin, Jonadab, devised a ruse in which Amnon finished illness and asked Tamar to prepare him food. When she brought it to him in his chamber, Amnon pressed her for sex. Despite her vehement refusal, he raped her. Afterward, Amnon treated her disdainfully and sent her home, hating her more than he had loved her. Desolate, Tamar tore her robe and marked her forehead with ashes. She went to Absalom, who fruitlessly attempted to comfort her. When David heard of her rape, he was angered but did nothing. Two years later, Absalom took his revenge by having Amnon murdered, then fled to Geshur, G-E-S-H-U-R.